My husband was secretly seeing his ex for years. Now I'm rebuilding my my life after the ultimate betrayal. I, 28F, have been married to my husband Samuel, 30M, for three years now. We've known each other since college and have been together for eight years in total. I always thought we had a great relationship. We rarely fought, shared the same interests, and generally enjoyed each other's company. So that was until last month when I found out Samuel had been hiding a huge secret from me. Samuel and I met during our sophomore year of college. We were both in the same study group for our economics class. I remember thinking he was cute, but I was too shy to make a move. It wasn't until our senior year that we finally started dating. So we hit it off immediately, bonding over our shared love of hiking, cooking, and terrible room comms. After graduation, we both got jobs in the same city. Samuel worked for a marketing firm while I started my career in human resources. We moved in together after a year of dating and things were great. We had our little routines, Sunday brunches, movie nights on Wednesdays, and weekend hikes when the weather was nice. Two years ago, Samuel proposed during a surprise weekend getaway to the mountains. It was perfect, just the two of us, surrounded by nature. I said yes without hesitation. Our wedding was small but beautiful, with just our closest friends and family in attendance. Everything seemed perfect. We talked about starting a family soon, maybe buying a house in the suburbs. I really thought I had it all figured out, but I guess life had other plans. It all started when I noticed Samuel acting a bit strange. He was spending more time on his phone often stepping out of the room to take calls and seemed distracted whenever we were together. At first, I didn't think much of it. I figured he was just stressed with work or something. But as the days went by, his behavior became more suspicious. One night, while Samuel was in the shower, his phone buzzed with a text message. I know I shouldn't have looked, but something in my gut told me I needed to. The message was from someone named Sarah, and it read, Can't wait to see you tomorrow, babe. So miss you already. I quickly put the phone back and tried to act normal when Samuel came out of the shower. The next day, I decided to follow Samuel when he left for work. And instead of going to his office, he drove to a small cafe on the other side of town. So that's where I saw him meet up with a woman I'd never seen before. They hugged, kissed, and sat down together, looking very much like a couple. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I wanted to confront them right there, but I was too shocked to move. I just sat in my car, watching them through the window, feeling like my whole world was falling apart. Samuels came home that evening. I confronted him. At first, he tried to deny everything, but when I told him I'd followed him, he broke down and confessed. Sarah wasn't just some random woman, she was his high school sweetheart. They had reconnected on Facebook about six months ago and had been seeing each other since then. I asked Samuel why he did it, why he couldn't just talk to me if he was unhappy. He said he didn't know why he did it, that he still loved me, but there was just something about Sarah that he couldn't resist. He begged me for forgiveness, promised to break it off with Sarah, and said he wanted to work on our marriage. I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to kick him out right then and there, but another part of me still loved him and wanted to believe we could fix this. In the end, I told Samuel I needed some time to think. I packed a bag and went to stay with my sister for a few days. My sister, Alad, 32F, has always been protective of me. When I told her what happened, she was furious. She wanted me to leave Samuel immediately, saying that once a cheater, always a cheater. But she also understood that it wasn't an easy decision for me to make. While staying with Alad, I did a lot of thinking about my relationship with Samuel. I thought about all the good times we had together. Our first date at that little Italian restaurant where we both ordered spaghetti and ended up with sauce all over our faces. The time we got lost on a hike and ended up camping under the stars. The way he held my hand through my father's funeral two years ago. But I also thought about the signs I might have missed. The times he was working late more often. The weekends he said he had to go into the office the way he sometimes seemed distant even when we were together. It's been a week now, and I'm still at my sister's place. Samuel has been calling and texting nonstop, begging me to come home so we can talk. My friends are divided. Some say I should give him another chance. Others say I should divorce him immediately. Um, my family, especially Elad, think I should leave him. I'm torn. On one hand, we've been together for so long, and up until now, I thought we had a great marriage. Um, is it worth throwing away eight years over one mistake? On the other hand, how can I ever trust him again? Every time he's on his phone or working late, will I always be wondering if he's with her? I keep thinking about our plans for the future. We were talking about trying for a baby next year. We had even started looking at houses in the suburbs, dreaming about a backyard for our future kids to play in. Now all of that seems so far away. I've always been the type of person who believes in second chances. When we were in college, Samuel cheated on a big exam and almost got expelled. I stood by him then, helped him appeal to the disciplinary board. He promised he'd never do anything like that again, and as far as I know, he kept that promise. But this feels different, bigger somehow. I'm also worried about what this means for my own self-worth. Um, am I not good enough? Did I do something wrong? Samuel swears it has nothing to do with me, that he was just weak and made a mistake, but it's hard not to take it personally. Then there's the practical side of things to consider. We have a joint bank account, 
a shared lease on our apartment, intertwine lives in so many ways. The thought of untangling all of that is overwhelming. I don't know what to do. Should I try to work things out with Samuel? Or should I end our marriage and start over? Has anyone been in a similar situation? How did you handle it? I keep going back and forth. One moment I'm ready to go home and try to work things out. The next I'm looking up divorce lawyers. I know I need to make a decision soon, but it feels impossible. For now, I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm grateful for my sister's support and the space to think things through. I just wish I knew what the right answer was. Update when it's been two weeks since my last post and a lot has happened. First of all, thank you to everyone who commented and offered advice. Your words really helped me during this difficult time. After a lot of thinking and talking with my sister, I decided to go back home and have a serious conversation with Samuel. I figured I owed it to our marriage to at least hear him out before making any final decisions. When I got home, Samuel looked like he hadn't slept in days. He immediately started apologizing again, saying how sorry he was and how much he regretted what he'd done. And the Brahma to talk but the he swore he had broken things off with Sarah for good and even showed me the messages where he told her it was over. And we talked for hours. Samuel explained that he and Sarah had dated in high school and she was his first love. When they reconnected on Facebook, old feelings resurfaced, and he got caught up in the excitement and nostalgia of it all. He said he never meant for it to go as far as it did, but one thing led to another, and before he knew it, he was in too deep. I asked him why he didn't just tell me about Sarah from the beginning. He said he was afraid I'd be upset or jealous, so he kept it a secret. When things started getting more serious with Sarah, he knew he should end it, but he didn't know how without hurting her or risking me finding out. I told Samuel how hurt and betrayed I felt, how his actions had shaken my trust in him to the core. I asked him how I could ever trust him again. He said he would do whatever it took to regain my trust. He offered to give me full access to his phone and social media accounts, to check in with me regularly when he's not at home. I even to quit his job and find a new one if that would make me feel better. After our talk, I felt a little better. Samuel seemed genuinely remorseful and willing to do whatever it took to save our marriage. I told him I wasn't ready to forgive him yet, but I was willing to try to work things out. We agreed to start marriage counseling and to take things day by day. We had our first counseling session a few days later. The counselor, Dr. Anderson, seemed nice enough. She asked us to talk about our relationship history, our communication styles, and what we both wanted for the future. It was uncomfortable at times, but I felt like we were making progress. Things were going okay for about a week. We started counseling, and Samuel was being very attentive and transparent. He would text me throughout the day, letting me know where he was and what he was doing. He even suggested we start doing more activities together, like taking a cooking class or joining a hiking group. But then something happened that threw everything into chaos again. I got a call from Sarah. Apparently, Samuel hadn't been entirely truthful about breaking things off with her. She told me that Samuel had indeed told her it was over. But then a few days later, he reached out to her again, saying he made a mistake and wanted to see her. They had met up just two days before I came home. I was furious. I confronted Samuel about this, and he broke down again. He admitted that he had reached out to Sarah one last time, claiming he needed closure. A purr, he swore nothing physical happened during that meeting, that they just talked, but he knew it was wrong, and that's why he didn't tell me about it. Now I'm back at square one, feeling even more betrayed than before. Samuel is begging for another chance, saying the meeting with Sarah made him realize for sure that he wants to be with me. But I don't know if I can believe anything he says anymore. I'm staying with my sister again. Samuel keeps calling and texting, but I'm not ready to talk to him yet. A lot is furious. Um, she wants me to file for divorce immediately, saying Samuel has proven he can't be trusted. My parents, who initially encouraged me to try to work things out, are now saying maybe a lot is right. I called Dr. Anderson and told her what happened. She suggested Samuel and I come in for an emergency session, but I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. She did recommend that I start seeing a therapist on my own to help process everything that's happening. I've been thinking a lot about my own role in all of this. Did I somehow contribute to Samuel's decision to cheat? There were there signs I missed. I know logically that his choices are his own, but it's hard not to wonder. I'm also struggling with feelings of embarrassment. We live in a small town and word travels fast. I'm dreading having to explain to people what's happening if we do end up getting divorced. I've been throwing myself into work as a distraction. My boss has been understanding, giving me some extra projects to focus on. Um, it helps to have something else to think about, even if it's just for a few hours a day. I'm seriously considering divorce at this point. I love Samuel, but I don't know if love is enough anymore. The trust is gone, and I'm not sure if it can ever be rebuilt. Has anyone been in a similar situation? Did you give your partner another chance after repeated lies? How did it turn out? Um... For now, I'm taking some time for myself. 
I started going to a yoga class that Alad recommended, trying to find some peace amidst all this chaos. I know I'll have to make a decision soon, but for now, I'm just trying to get through each chai as it comes. Update 2 It's been a month since my last update, and things have taken an unexpected turn. I've spent this time living separately from Samuel trying to figure out what I want to do. During this time, I've learned some things that have completely changed my perspective on the situation. First, I want to thank everyone who commented on my last post. Your advice and support have been invaluable during this difficult time. Many of you suggested I dig deeper into Samuel's story, and I'm glad I took that advice. Aunt, about two weeks ago, I decided to reach out to Sarah myself. I know many of you advised against this, but I felt I needed to hear her side of the story. What she told me was shocking. Glinnery shankwi de kring, I, I am pain. According to Sarah, her relationship with Samuel wasn't just a recent thing that started six months ago. They had been in an on and off relationship for years, even before Samuel, and I started dating. She told me that Samuel had always kept her as a backup, reaching out to her whenever things got tough in our relationship. Um, Sarah shared with me text messages and emails dating back to the early days of my relationship with Samuel. There were messages from times when I thought we were exclusively dating, including during major milestones in our relationship like when we moved in together and even around the time of our engagement. I was stunned. This meant that Samuel had been lying to me for our entire relationship, not just the past six months. Sarah even showed me old photos of them together, some from trips Samuel had told me were work-related. When I confronted Samuel with this information, he initially tried to deny it. But when I showed him the evidence Sarah had given me, he finally broke down and admitted the truth. He confessed that he had been stringing Sarah along for years, unable to fully commit to either of us. I was devastated. <laughs> it felt like my entire relationship with Samuel had been built on lies. All those years I thought we were happy together, he had been maintaining a relationship with another woman behind my back. Samuel begged for forgiveness, saying he truly did love me and wanted to make our marriage work. He claimed he had been too cowardly to fully commit to either relationship, always afraid of missing out. He promised he was ready to cut Sarah out of his life for good this time. But I don't think I can get past this. It's not just about the cheating anymore, it's about years of deception and manipulation. I feel like I don't even know who Samuel really is anymore, I decided to file for divorce. It's not an easy decision, but I feel it's the right one. I can't imagine ever trusting Samuel again, and I don't want to spend the rest of my life wondering if he's being truthful with me. Samuel is devastated and keeps trying to change my mind, but I'm standing firm in my decision. My family and friends have been incredibly supportive, especially Elodie who has been my rock through all of this. I've started the process of separating our lives. I'm looking for a new apartment and have opened my own bank account. It's scary starting over, but also somewhat liberating. I know the road ahead won't be easy, but I feel a sense of relief knowing that I'm making the right choice for myself. Has anyone else been through a divorce after discovering long-term infidelity? Any advice on how to move forward? Update 3 It's been six months since my last update, and I wanted to share how things have progressed. The divorce is now finalized, and I'm slowly but surely rebuilding my life. The divorce process was difficult, both emotionally and practically. Samuel initially tried to contest it, still insisting that we could work things out. But eventually, he realized I was serious and agreed to an uncontested divorce. We managed to settle things relatively amicably, dividing our assets and going our separate ways. I've moved into a new apartment in a different part of town. It's smaller than the place Samuel and I shared, but it feels like mine. I've been enjoying decorating it and making it feel like home. My sister Elodie has been a huge help, spending weekends with me painting walls and assembling furniture. I also started a new job. After everything that happened, I felt like I needed a fresh start in all aspects of my life. I'm now working for a nonprofit organization that helps underprivileged kids get access to education. It's challenging work, but incredibly rewarding. I feel like I'm making a difference, which has been healing in its own way. I've also started dating again, though I'm taking things very slowly. My trust issues are still there, but I'm working on them. I've been seeing a therapist regularly which has been helping me process everything that happened and work on rebuilding my self-esteem. I've gone on a few casual dates, nothing serious yet. It's been nice to remember that there are good, honest people out there. I'm not ready for a serious relationship, but it's good to know that when I am ready, there's hope for finding someone who will treat me with respect and honesty. As for Samuel, I've heard through mutual friends that he's still single. Apparently, Sarah broke things off with him for good when she found out the full extent of his deception. Last I heard, he was in Barabee trying to work on his issues with commitment and honesty. Looking back, I'm glad I made the decision to leave. It was hard and there are still days when I miss the life I thought I had. But I know now that it was all built on lies, and I deserve better than that. One unexpected positive that came out of this whole situation is that it brought me closer to my family. A lot and I have always been close, but going through this has strengthened our bond even more. My parents, who live a few hours away, have been visiting more often. We've started having weekly family dinners, which has been really nice. 
Ah, I've also reconnected with some old friends who I lost touch with during my marriage. It's been great to rebuild those relationships and remember who I was before I became Samuel's wife. There are still difficult days, of course. Sometimes I catch myself thinking about the future I thought I would have with Samuel, the house in the suburbs, the kids we talked about having. It's hard to let go of those dreams, but I'm also excited about the new possibilities that lie ahead. I started taking some classes at the local community college, just for fun. I'm learning photography, something I've always been interested in but never had time for before. Um, it's been a great way to meet new people and focus on something positive. To anyone going through a similar situation, I want to say, trust your gut. If something feels off, it probably is. Don't be afraid to ask questions and seek the truth, even if it's painful. And remember, you deserve honesty and respect in a relationship. It's also okay to take your time healing. Un, there's no set timeline for getting over something like this. Some days I feel great, like I'm completely over it. Other days, something will remind me of Samuel, and I'll feel sad all over again. I'm learning that's normal and part of the process. I'm not sure what the future holds, but for the first time in a long time, I'm excited to find out. I'm rediscovering who I am as an individual, not just as someone's partner. It's scary sometimes, but also thrilling. Next story, my wife, 32F, and I, 31M, have been together for five years. I'm fed up with my wife's chronic lateness to many things. It's really annoying and grates on my nerves. To her, it seems like no big deal, because I always manage to rush her by telling her the time of an event 45 minutes earlier. She's never noticed earlier because she's too caught up with herself, constantly taking photos. Um, that's the reason she's always late. She has a decent following on Instagram and is looking to grow as a content creator. I find it really silly how she turns everything we do into a photo session. And, at this point, I've stopped agreeing to take her photos altogether. We've had several conversations about this. I've told her that it's mentally exhausting for me to always have to stay on top of making sure we both get ready according to plan. But she never really does anything to address it. This time, I wanted her to experience the consequences of her actions. This month alone, we've been embarrassingly late to events two times. And this time was the first she realized I hadn't been honest about the timing because I used to give her an ETA 40 minutes earlier. A week ago, I told her I wouldn't be doing that anymore and that I expected her to act like an adult and be more responsible. It was her birthday this weekend and I got her tickets to an event featuring several performers, including her favorite artists in the first act. So this time, as I'd already told her before, I didn't give her the extra 40-minute buffer. I expected her to remember our conversation and store that information in her head to plan accordingly. Said she did her whole influencer routine decorating our room, setting up studio lights, dressing up, and taking photos. So the whole time, I knew she was missing out on her favorite artist because she didn't take me seriously. It was so ironic that I didn't even feel like reminding her. I'm done with the mental burden of always rushing and planning. So we arrived, and she realized what had happened. She got upset and started crying asking how I could do this to her on her birthday. She said it seemed like I was liking the rise it got from her and asked why I couldn't set my ego aside or one day. I told her this was on her. I'd already made it clear I wasn't going to rush anymore and she should have listened the first time and expected me to follow through, unlike her. She said the whole point of the event was to see the performances of those artists who we'd just missed. She was incredibly upset and kept crying off and on during the event. The ride home was awkward. I was in the downstairs restroom when she texted me saying I wasn't welcome in the bedroom that night. I ignored her message and went in while she was changing. She looked like she wanted to kill me, and I simply told her that her saying I'm not welcome was irrelevant because it's my room too. If she's uncomfortable, she could take the couch. She ended up leaving to visit her mom, and I'm considering whether I was an asshole. 